Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our LEGO first LEGO for Tax uh, webinar series uh, with the next digital transformation as, uh, as our theme. Uh, we will be giving it another one or two minutes to allow people to, uh, to join this session. So give us one or two minutes uh, before we will uh, open and, and start this, uh, this event. Good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, Steve Hybrexer speaking. I'm the CEO of TPA Global. I have with me uh, Daniel van der Linden uh, of a uh, sister company of uh, TPA uh, called eBright. And he's going to um, demo today the, the global universal mobile compliance tracker. Um, and and uh, I'm very honored to have Keval. Keval is uh, the um, uh, Chief Executive at uh, Signet Infotech, uh, and he he will um, share with us uh, the R7 tool and end-to-end -to -end fat technology solution for the market. And and both Daniel and Kefal will connect the dots uh, through the connector between those two, um, as I call it, Lego blocks for tax. So this is uh, if we. Go to the next slide. This will be a series of events where uh, TPA is hosting uh, a series of Lego blocks and solutions in the market. Uh, as you can see from this um, um, this slide, there, there will be there's a whole lineup of uh, various Lego blocks who all through connectors with uh, the other Lego blocks uh, are talking to each other. Uh, in essence, we believe that at this moment there's no one shoe fits all, um, where basically you can go to the supermarket and buy your Lego uh, prefab uh, uh, package and then uh, go home and build the total solution for in house tax workflows. So, in essence, every one of you, especially if you're in corporates, are struggling with what Lego blocks do I have and what Lego blocks do I still need to uh, one, uh, make my life easier, two, uh, make my CFO happier on the cost level, and three, to uh, deal with the increasing pressure uh, by tax authorities to deliver a lot of stuff in a digital format. And if, if uh, four, if you don't, uh, which is uh, a whole other session, uh, then uh, suddenly the commercial people knock on your door and say, okay, we didn't get our invoices to our clients pre-cleared in Italy, so we, we don't receive cash, or we have some goods which cannot cross the border in um, in Russia because our our customs compliance is not up to par with the standards the Russian tax authorities expect. So in that light, we, we took a very wide uh, range of software packages uh, today, as I said, the R7 tool and the compliance tracker are on the list. Uh, in January, uh, just to give you a, a fraction of um, of uh, what what will happen uh, next year, 
owner access a uh, tax engine solution within SAP uh, in an S uh, as for HANA environment is uh, in, uh, enhancing the tax engine functionality. SASVIA is a BI tool which uh, has already various connectors with source tier uh, ERP packages like SAP, Oracle, and uh, Navision, uh, but also uh, the exact online zero type of environments. Um, in February, we will look at 4Q. 4Q is a carve out of GE, and that's a big platform which takes data and spits out invoices uh, that compatible in, uh, in about 160 countries, fully VAT compliant, um, and, and, and their engines uh, really run in the company services on a worldwide base. Um, PPG is an um, is an transpiring piece of software which also connects uh, the dots with intercompany legal agreements with uh, an all automated, but also uh, country by country reporting. So it has um, a, a connectors uh, between the uh, country by country and the source tier again to make uh, that workflow uh, being fully automated. Um, we will not only address the narrow definition of tax and technology, but because simply said, a lot of the people online will spend at least 60% of their time on process and communication tools like Office 365. So together with a second tier accounting firms, HLB, we've developed uh, various applications which also connect to your uh, process and communication environment. With uh, Pink Vision and, and Customs XBT, we will showcase you both that customs as well as uh, sustainability reporting digital solutions um, to be followed in, uh, in, in April with two uh, sessions where we will look at, uh, at, at what a company like Visor is doing. Uh, they help build uh, data configuration platforms uh, for tax authorities and how that tax data uh, once received from corporates is being exchanged across borders. So uh, we will also in that light address a um, traffic light configuration. How can all these uh, Lego blocks work together in a, a very structured manner? So having said that, uh, let's let's move on. This is a series, and uh, if you signed up, you signed up for the series. Doesn't mean you need to be there each and every time, but the, the sessions you are interested in, please log in, and uh, we make sure you get the reminder um, in case uh, the event will take place because the dates will be firmed up in the coming weeks. So what are we looking for? Um, in um, setting the scene, uh, we, we typically say you need to inspire people, you need to have very well-defined uh, uh, processes uh, in order to make technology work in your favor. So if you have not inspired people, uh, people will continue to do the things they used to do. If you have not predefined process you want to run, uh, you're very likely going to end up with uh, an automated tool of a chaotic process with not very much inspired people behind the, 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 uh, the, the screen. Um, and I've seen it and I've done it and I know it's not a, a success. So if you don't follow this cycle, uh, we always have a hard, uh, a hard time getting the engine running if, uh, if you don't follow this cycle in this sequence. Um, next slide is, is addressing a little bit the uh, essentials and this is a people and process slide where we say okay uh, in tax and particularly we have lined up and i know there's a lot of fat people so you can uh, on the on the call so you can translate it to your own in-house uh, vat processes you run on a daily basis uh, here we took as an illustration transfer pricing. So here is nine workflows for transfer pricing in-house people. And, and we typically say, okay, uh, even if it's smaller departments, 
you need to organize some kind of racy mapping. And racy mapping, it connects the people with the processes. So if you haven't done that yet, it, it always will uh, depend on who is um, uh, communicating with who uh, and if there's incidents, there will be no clarity on who is going to clean up the mess. So this type of simple racy processes where the R typically stands for responsible person to deliver the, the report, the A is the one who does the quality control and signs off, the, um, the C is the one who has special expertise, say on customs and needs consulted on uh, particular transactions and the I is the ones who need to be informed. Uh, typically, if, if you talk to corporates and in-house people, and my question on transfer pricing would be who gets a copy of this file and they say the whole world, then I know they, they're, not in, they're not in control, but they're just trying to cover their ass for not being in control. So, so things like that uh, do come with uh, the people process technology approach. Have your RACI chart uh, available. If you don't have it yet, software will be a challenge uh, by, by any standards. If we go to the next slide, then I would like to say, okay, well, what's, what's different in the world of tax today than what it was a couple of years ago? Well, a couple of years ago, I think tax people waited for finance to throw some data sets over the fence, and then they started to see whether those data sets were useful for tax purposes. Uh, the slide here is a very complex slide, so I'm, I'm just going to highlight what what my message is. My message is that if uh, in-house tax teams are expecting clean data to come out of your uh, financial um, uh, system, uh, out of your ERP package, then you, you are miserably disappointed. So what we see happening is that in um, the operational cycle where transactions and, and businesses run, uh, tax system analysts and ERP tax data modelers uh, are are being appointed. Why? Because they already uh, in the at the, the origin site of data where transactions take place and uh, accounts receivable and, and payables positions uh, hit the balance sheet and the general ledgers. Uh, the the data needs to be cleaned and validated against different sources and. Uh, if you don't do it here, you put a big um, uh, burden, uh, at, at least you put all the emphasis on, uh, if you look at the right side, the tax data analysts who are using Python and uh, UiPath as tools to uh, do tax data refinery. And, and refinery means you, you get raw data in and you need the relevant data uh, to fit into your sell for your VAT or corporate income tax return or your transfer pricing transaction schedule. Um, out of that, um, you, you need to add non-ERP transactions and adjustments, uh, which obviously, uh, once you have all that information organized, uh, the tax preparer in the tax department can take uh, his role or her role and start preparing the full compliance cycle. Um, on top of that, once you have that, that data, there's a tax data mining where you can, using Power BI or Tableau, you can start running much more of an orchestrated um, uh, data outlier analysis. What we see happening, for example, with country by country reporting as just one illustration, um, the, the, that uh, tax data mining uh, professionals start analyzing the data and report for tax strategy for risk management to the the board or the global head of tax the uh, these uh, these outliers and these opportunities as well. Well, to orchestrate all of this, uh, we we did not invent, but you see more and more recruitment ads coming up for taxologists, which is just 
uh, the guy of the girl who who pulls all of these professionals together and also reports uh, the corporate strategy to uh, the, the the board or the CFO or the audit committee, um, whatever the reporting structure is for tax. So this puts uh, the the people roles and the process roles into perspective, and especially the new. Uh, uh, the new professional roles which are needed to run um, uh, systems and, and data sets. With that, uh, let's let's move on to the next slide, which is uh, a, a simpler version of what you just saw on the left side. You see where the data comes from and gets cleansed. Uh, you have some applications like our seven tool uh, on the right, which do an, a further uh, cleansing and uh, prepping of data sets. Uh, all of that lands in a digital mailbox to the tax authorities, uh, whether it's VAT, transfer pricing, corporate income tax, or customs. Um, simply said, there's also the process and communication tools like Office and the Google Suite to pull communication all together, uh, but often also things like SharePoint are used as a repository. Um, to uh, to make it all work. So this uh, digital mailbox to tax authorities is the end game. So if you know what you need to deliver uh, and you have orchestrated it well enough, um, one important uh, one important feature is that the filing with the tax authorities is becoming more and more predefined. The data set you need for all these filings has huge overlaps. Uh, however, I, I do see a lot of corporates still running a silo, uh, siloed reporting for VAT, the siloed reporting for customs and for corporate income tax and transfer pricing. Uh, this is also a, a picture which starts integrating these flows. Um, the, the next slide does say, okay, if we have a, a Lego block, what what is the what is the minimum conditions these Lego blocks should have? And, and, and Lego block stands for an application, uh, a Power BI, um, um, a process and communication tool. Uh, they should be able to connect seamlessly with, with other Lego blocks. They should increase the efficiency of data and people workflows. They should be easy easily scalable upwards as well as downwards um, depending on on your need um, and and uh, as uh, w without any discussion it should happen in a secured environment so that's that's i think very important for all the lego blocks we are looking at just uh next slide is is basically saying and trying to flatten the world of tax a little bit what is tax really about? Tax is about making sure all that data gets into a tax form and is filed appropriately and you get a digital signal back. Uh, tax is about if you report something, the other side might not ac accept. You, you're talking about risk management. Um, you're also talking about risk management if you don't file on time or you get not, or you you are not equipped to run, uh, for example, this uh, VAT, uh, the, these uh, e-invoices through a pre-clearance at the Italian tax authorities who then give you a digital watermark before you can send your invoices to uh, your clients. Uh, those are all different risk areas to, to deal with. Uh, I think last but not least is is how do you communicate all of this uh, to tax authorities who more and more communicate back to you in, in terms of bots and not humans. Uh, so there's a whole process also in terms of taxpayers' rights and the proper communication um, is, is not always that straightforward anymore. With that, I would like to hand over to Daniel for taking you through the Compliance track. Yes, thank you, Stan. Um, the Lego blocks that Steve was talking about, I am going to show you one, indeed, the compliance tracker. Uh, the compliance tracker, which is 
built together with Signet. Uh, um, Keval from Signet will show later on uh, the R7 VAT tool um, and that will connect to the compliance tracker. Um, it's a mobile app, uh, but it's loaded uh, from a desktop. Um, and it's a mobile app on purpose because um, on the mobile app, you're forced to prioritize on main features simply because the screen is small. And the main features we saw um, in order to give back control to the head of tax of uh, his or her uh, compliance workflows is first of all, having a dashboard and um, and, and uh, sh changing deadlines and changing people uh, around. So his people or her people in the in-house tax team, but also on the advisory side. Um, so that's one dynamic. The other dynamic is uh, the deadlines. Deadlines are usually fixed, as you know, um, but there is usually an artificial deadline. Um, so giving um, someone who is working on a certain workflow a little bit of extra time simply by clicking a few buttons uh, can now be done through the app. Um, it's already live. So it's uh, on the Android App Store and in the Apple App Store. So if you're on the line and you find it interesting, um, just let us know afterwards and we can set up very easily a test account for you um, and persons in your team. Uh, but now I'm going to show you a clickable version, uh, which is just a design version, but it's a replica uh, of, of the actual. Yes, if it loads, yes, it loads. So as I said, it's set up in the back end. So loading um, all the types of taxes that you have to comply with um, and loading who is working on those. And that can be your in-house team and uh, the advisors. Um, according to a RACI, as Steve explained uh, before. So what are we looking at here? Um, it's a mobile screen and as most apps, um, it has a navigation bar in the bottom. The first one is the dashboard. The second tab, that's the total batch with documents. Um, so there can be the total of documents that you have to file in the entire year. Um, and the third one, that's the uh, capacity planner, simply because all the data is already in the backend. And with data, I mean uh, deadlines and who's working on the deadlines. Simply because you already put it in the system, uh, you can very easily um, uh, also show a graph with capacity planning um, on the app. And the fourth one, that's the well, it, it simulates the Facebook. So everybody who is involved in these processes, either um, as a responsible, an accountable, a consultant or an informed, it doesn't matter, everybody is in there with their workload. Um, I will go into all four uh, uh, now. So the dashboard, what are we looking at? We're looking at color coding, uh, very popular also because it's very uh, effective. Um, we have a total number of 32 documents. Obviously, this is not a realistic scenario, but let's say we have a 32 documents to, to, uh, to file uh, in an entire year. Um, six of those uh, require no action yet, meaning they will come, uh, but they will come in two weeks or maybe even in a month or in two months. Uh, so they require no attention from us yet. All eight documents, they need to be started, but we have nothing to worry yet. They are supposed to be started now or tomorrow. Uh, so we're not gonna focus on, uh, on those documents now. Uh, by the way, we're focusing now on the app as a head of tax. So we're now looking at a head of tax who is um, at uh, waiting for the train, opening his screen and looking at his dashboard. Uh, do I need to step in somewhere or not? Well, here, he or she doesn't have to step in. Where um, they do need to step in is the next color coding, where it says hasn't been started. That means that these documents um, had a change of color simply because the person who is accountable for starting this workflow didn't manually um, set it to in process. That means that me, at Daniel, let's say I'm a, I'm a tax officer and I'm supposed to work on a VAT, 
uh, uh, preparation. Um, it ends up in my mailbox as to be started. So I'm going to start. But if I wait too long with it, that can be for many reasons, obviously. But if I wait too long with it, uh, then I can never put it in process. So it stays and it then goes here. The exclamation mark is here for a reason. It's there so the head of text gets a notification and can step in. Different things you can do uh, to, to step in. Either change the deadline by talking to me and asking, how is everything going? Why are you not started yet? Um, do you need a bit of time? I can answer, yes, I, I do need a bit uh, more time simply because um, I have too many things on my plate, but I'll work this entire weekend. Uh, so you can leave it with me, but maybe you can move the deadline three days uh, forward. That will give me a, a bit more space, but I will do it, don't worry. Okay, um, so the next color coding is deadline approaching. That's the last um, color where I can still step in without it being too late, meaning I'm too late with filing, meaning I have the chance of um, getting uh, getting an, uh, how do you say it? Um, getting a fine. Uh, obviously, you don't want that. So these two are the ones where I, as a head of text, want to step in. Uh, in order to come back in control. While that's stepping in, I already explained one um, uh, option is by giving this person a little bit of extra time. Another option is um, changing the person who is working on it. I'm going to show you that now by taking this one as an example, because this one has this color coding. So let's say this VAT return um, me, Claire, I'm accountable for this uh, for this workflow. Um, I'm gonna. Oh, sorry. John is is responsible for this uh, for this workflow. Um, but I know that John is very busy and um, he has things planned already in the weekend, so he cannot work in the weekend. Meaning, I need to have someone else uh, take care of it. Sorry, I'm showing the the wrong screen. Um, I have to be here. So. Um, I have to replace this person by someone else, which I will because um, Max just came back from holidays. He has plenty of energy and not so many things to do. So Max is going to um, finish this workflow and everything will be fine. So that's one of the things I can do. Uh, now let's look at it from a different perspective. I'm now a tax officer. So I'm using the app by uh, changing the status. And why am I changing the status? I'm changing the status to let the head of text know everything's fine, I'm working on it. So I can do that. And I can change the status to, let's say, in process. That's one thing I can do. But once I'm finished and I uploaded my document in the SharePoint, I can say I am completed. I have completed this work in time. By doing that, I'm letting the head of text know I'm finished. You can do your quality check. I'm moving on to the next thing. So now I covered uh, the two main uh, features of the app. Um, the third feature um, I was already talking about is the capacity planning. Um, since you already have the data, it's very easy to, to show it on the screen. So that's why we did that. Um, and where the dashboard is more of on a weekly basis, how are we doing? This is on a more monthly, even quarterly basis. Um, how can we balance out the workload? So, and now everything is, is equal, but let's say in May, we're super, super busy. But the workload, sorry, the, 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 the number of people in the team, it stays the same. So we can either say, we're gonna do a little bit of pre-work in April. So we have to move a bit of deadlines, uh, move deadlines a bit forward, we can do that. Or we talk to the tax authority and we see what we can do uh, moving deadlines there. Uh, we can also say, okay, I'm gonna, just for May, I'm gonna ask my advisor to have uh, two FTE extra to support me um, in this super busy month. So there's many things you can do and you can do that because you have the insight already in the app. Then the fourth and last step is the Facebook, as I said. Um, so what you now often see, and we hear that very often, not just from head of, heads of tax, but also from uh, compliance officers is, um, 
I'm disturbing my tax officers quite a lot. I'm calling them, I'm emailing them. Um, it's almost harassment. Um, you don't want that and you don't have that if you have such an app, simply because you know what's going on. Um, now, let's say um, we're gonna find an employee that we think this person is a bit late uh, finishing um, his or her work. Instead of emailing or calling them, in other words, disturbing them, we can also check, hmm, let's see, John, how busy, or Joseph, how, how busy is Joseph? Ah, yeah, there's quite some things on, on his plate. Now I understand why he's so busy and he's late. So instead of calling and getting mad, I can look at his Facebook and see how busy uh, Joseph is and take action based on that. So if I see indeed he's way too busy to finish all of this, I need to step in and someone else needs to take over. So it, it yeah, that's another way of um, um, uh, causing more efficiency by not having to call or email around. And that works two ways. Um, so that's the that's the uh, the demo as I wanted to present. Um, again, um, please let us know if you find it interesting, and we can load a test version for you. We can load it with with transfer pricing, uh, corporate income tax, uh, VAT uh, deadlines um, for you to test around in a, for for a couple countries. Um, that's that's not a problem at all. Now I'm going back to the presentation, and. What we're here for is Lego for tax. And what does Lego for tax, uh, well, you, you know the meaning of it, but connecting to other apps is very important simply because every organization already is using a lot of uh, apps and other technologies uh, and you don't want to start from scratch. No, no, you want to use what's already there and connect to it. And how do you connect to it? It's by building connectors that trigger actions so and i'm not going to mention mention them all but for example um let's say me as a head of tax i made the whole calendar for the whole year uh, the production calendar and i um, allocated all the roles to persons in my team that means that um, if i have an integration with uh, outlook that workload can automatically be put in as deadlines in the outlook of the person who is involved in that. So that's one trigger that makes it, it makes the life of the people involved easier. Another uh, could be, let's say um, the document that I as a tax officer was supposed to prepare, I finished that and I uploaded in SharePoint in the folder finished or ready for quality check. If a new document is added there, it will trigger in the compliance tracker app the status completed in time. And that again gives a signal to the head of text that he has something to do, uh, namely uh, do a quality check before it goes to the tax authority. So it's not just one way, meaning compliance tracker to other apps. No, it's also the other way around. And there's a lot possible. So, um, yeah, depending on what you're already using or what's on your plan uh, for using, so your tech technology plan, um, a lot of things are possible, a lot of connections are already built. And uh, that's why I want to give uh, give the word to Keval as well um, to show one of the connections that's possible, namely with the R7 VET tool. Um, and what the R7 VET tackles is for example, um, you have an issue in in the UK, not per se an issue. You're just looking at a situation where you want to um, make VAT filing digital in the UK. And we suggest take the Lego for tax approach. And now Kevo is going to explain uh, why and how that exactly works. Okay, well, I need to provide the screen to you. Sure. Thanks, Daniel. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so perfect. So as Daniel and Steve mentioned, R7 VAT is a tool that helps companies manage their VAT obligations across a number of countries, uh, but primarily focusing on UK and then expanding on there from the rest of EU 
uh, in the Middle East and and their indirect taxes in India. Right? The way the tool works, like a lot of different compliance tools, is that again there's a set of Lego blocks that get the data into the tool. Um, there's some compliance deadlines that have to be adhered to. So some some of the team members will go in and prepare a VAT return based on the data that's in, and then the data is filed directly onto whatever government authorities are there. So walking you through the tool quickly in interest of time, as we can see, there's some data import pending for a certain date, right, on the sales and purchase side. There's some data that's already populated. So we have a VAT return that's pre-filled here. This is the UK VAT return with some data that has to be submitted to the government. And then a functionality that's increasingly available in a lot of different companies. I have my tax obligations. I'll take a second to explain what this means. In the UK, the government has provided information to each company, which can be accessed through one of these Lego blocks like R7 VAT. Uh, to see when their VAT deadlines are due. So just as an example, you know, there's for this company, the VAT quarter runs from 1st of January to 31st of March, and the VAT return is due on the 7th of May. So we get this information coming in from an official source. We also get another information point, which is that this VAT return has been filed. This VAT return has not been filed. And we also know what date it's filed on. And so this is essentially the kind of functionality that R7 VAT has. Now, depending on any of these open returns, you can go ahead and choose to create a VAT return and choose to file from them. I think at this point, I'll ask Daniel to switch back to the next slide that we have. Um, we'll just change over in a second, but I'll talk a little bit more about how the three functionality points that I described over here, right, which is starting a VAT return, looking at VAT deadlines, and filing a VAT return, how they connect with the compliance tracker. right? So as we saw on the R7 tool, which is on the right over here, we get VAT deadlines coming in from the UK government, right, directly. Based on the VAT deadlines, we can create documents within the compliance tool automatically. So if I have a company in the UK and I have a UK accountant who looks at the VAT deadline, him or, or my compliance advisor, they don't have to go in and create a VAT deadline alert or a VAT deadline document in the compliance tracker. The R7 VAT tool does it itself because these are Lego blocks that connect to each other. The R7 VAT tool also has user assignment so I know within my VAT team who has to prepare the VAT return, who has to submit the submit or approve the VAT return, and who else can view the VAT return. We get the same allocation to the same users directly into the compliance tracker tool, again, saving you some steps in the process. And then, of course, the most important functionality, which is number three on the list here, which is the automatic status update. So what this does is whenever there's a new VAT return deadline coming in each quarter, whenever work on the VAT return has started or whenever it's been filed, and of course, whether it's due or not due, all those details come in directly from the R7 tool into the compliance tracker, saving you a lot of time in the synchronization going back and forth. Now, the approach that I've described here for the R7 tool, the same approach can be applied on any number of such finance or compliance software. So whether you have your direct tax returns, whether you have your transfer pricing returns, and we'll cover more of these in the rest of the Lego for tax series. Each of those tools should be able to sync up with the compliance tracker directly and in a similar fashion, create deadlines, assign users automatically, and of course, um, update the status as per whether the compliance is done or not. This is really, this really shows the sort of power of putting in more of these Lego blocks together. Um, and also, of course, Compliance Tracker being a very flexible application can connect with the existing tools that an organization has in place as well to, to really make these compliance processes a lot more efficient and a lot more you know, low risk. Uh, so, so we reduce the risk of non-compliance because everyone has the alerts on, on their fingertips. Okay. Um... Okay, Val, that this this was great. Uh, the, the last slide shows the connectivity. Um, what what we see in in practice a lot. Uh, we were talking to a company with a couple of thousands of filings, um, indirect tax filings, by the way. Um, and and the typical configuration we come across is um, a spreadsheet kept by a lead compliance officer in a shared service center. Um, for, for the whole region. Uh, that's not very uncommon. Um, the, the spreadsheet is either uh, in, in a SharePoint type of environment or is kept on a, on a, 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 um, 
what is it a a server locally uh, and 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 typically uh, the the workflow of one or two persons who manage the whole process um so what what we intend to do is to streamline a lot of these processes and why is that because tax authorities more and more um almost on a daily basis how huh, we we started um tracking tax and technology alerts uh, since the beginning of this year. And, and what does that mean is it means that uh, for 1-1-2020, um, uh, Norway needs a SAFT form to be filed. Uh, okay, so, so there's about more than 100 of those which we created since the beginning of this year. That means tax authorities are moving at such rapid speed to get into this digital uh, uh, this digital handling of uh, of data packages and and, and forms that uh, the, the fact that you are doing um, a, one project at a time, so you first deal you with your VAT pre clearance in, uh, in in in, uh, in in Italy, you then deal with your uh, uh, similar process in Spain. Um, you deal with your CBCR reporting in the German territory where the uh, the XML uh, mailbox changed a few, a, a few times over the last couple of years, so you need to keep that updated. Um, well, the 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 number of alerts we are looking at uh, is is exponential. So what the, the this slide is really about is okay. You you want to. Um, set yourself some objectives. What is the workflows we're going to automate? Uh, and who is going to be involved in that process? Uh, the people process technology cycle. The, the organization and the governance around that. Uh, so that's our RACI. Um, what workflows we do select? Is it the easy uh, to replicate uh, high high frequency transactions. Probably it is. It's, it will not be the unique M and A deal you're trying to automate in terms of compliance. Then uh, the, the the reverse engineering is sometimes true. That's typically how micro projects start. So you need to feed and on the preclearance in Italy, you need to feed certain data sets in, into that that tool by the tax authorities. Well, that means you do start doing reverse engineering, but that doesn't always naturally mean you have the right data configuration uh, in place because the way you orchestrated it for Italy might not work for uh, the neighbor country, uh, France. Uh, so I think output, output reverse engineering was quite common, uh, but it created a lot of uh, Lego blocks which were not uh, uh, not a easy to stack on top of each other. So again, uh, functionality selection, what are you looking for, what the tool is doing, is it picking up data, is it cleaning data, is it putting an application around the data, uh, 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 like, a, like a conversion, and uh, or does it deal with the mailman, uh, the digital mailman you're looking at? And last but not least, project implementation. This is all pretty much open doors for whoever works in-house. Uh, however, if you have a plan like this, uh, you should, uh, on a daily basis, update the plan in terms of priorities and, and um, uh, build in these 100 alerts, which we, we at PPA have been uh, picking up since the beginning of the year, at least see whether each of or each of those alerts has uh, an impact on your priorities when it comes to the digital transformation of uh, of your uh, tax workflow. Um, so the the, the next uh, slide is is really asking you some questions. Um, Simple questions. Do you have a clearly defined RACI on most of your in-house tax workflows? Um, what, what roles, uh, maybe you recall the, the picture I was showing, the complex picture, what of the roles have you already defined, either as part of your in-house tax team or 
maybe as a delegation uh, of those roles to the finance department. And then what, what is your priority? So we, we, made, uh, we made it easy on you. Uh, if you want your tax technology roadmap, uh, answering these questions at least gets you already on a one page of what, what your priorities uh, look like. Um, Keval and, and Daniel, any any points you wanna you wanna raise here as well? And, and maybe if people wanna raise questions, please do so with the chat functionality. I have nothing to add to uh, to this. No. I think maybe just a small point, but mm -hmm. just one maybe takeaway from all the attendees here. I think the main aim with the Lego for Tax series is just to show uh, all the attendees who are working in a compliance, finance, or tax department uh, what is possible with technology today, which will really help them go back to their own companies and at least start a conversation with the teams internally, or start thinking about how to make processes more efficient because a lot of exciting technology has come into place uh, that can make all of your life a lot easier and that's that's i think the takeaway that i would want all the attendees to take from the first webinar in the series very well um yeah i think the uh the the most oh there's a question let me see can we Maybe scroll it. Would you have a functional? You oh sorry. Would you have a functional profile scope and responsibility overview racks for some of the roles listed, like tax data miner and taxologist, etc. Uh, uh, Martin, uh, thanks for the question. Yes, that that is definitely out there. Um, PPA has has. Uh, uh, is presenting a tax technology course, actually a couple of them for its clients, and it has a very uh, very defined set of uh, role descriptions for each of these roles. Um, and there's actually also a, um, uh, a, a YouTube video, which this, uh, a few of these roles are already illustrated in, in early, earlier webinars. So yes, there, there is, I wouldn't call it recruitment ads with the exact profiles, but enough uh, of a description. So we, uh, uh, what we can do, is we can add it to this slide deck and share it with all of you guys. So you have also the definitions of what we consider to be these roles and what what they entail. Um, any other questions? Okay, I think then we're uh, we're on the on the line of uh, closing this call. Thank you very much for uh, being present. You will find you will find yourself um, uh, 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 subscribed to a series, so you will get a notification on the exact date of the January first event. Uh, if we look at the next slide, you uh, basically see again the list of. Uh, webinars uh, we we are uh, uh, presenting all of these webinars are in close cooperation with um, um, parties who are heavily involved in in these type of uh, projects and do it on a daily basis um, the, the 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 notion we uh, PPA is dealing with is is that PPA is is doing a what I call a system integration by design. So we help corporates to get the relevant races and roles and, uh, and get the inspiration with people, uh, define the processes, and then select from a whole host of uh, software uh, uh, solutions and, and tax and technology solutions, but also don't forget educational solutions and don't forget Again, the process and communication technology. Um, the, the development we see in the market, just to round off this conversation, is we have we see a standalone piece of software which does not talk to the rest of the market. Uh, that is what we call the, the first generation. Uh, 
uh, we we see software packages which work within an R ERP like SAP. Uh, they're the second generation. We see various applications who are independent of these ERP packages uh, running uh, uh, their data sets and convert whatever data set there is into a fit for purpose output again to be sent through the mailbox to the tax authorities. That's the third generation. And the fourth generation, we, we are expecting and seeing fragments on. I, I, I repeatedly use the example of this pre-clearance of your e-invoice by the Italian tax authorities. We have to assume this type of pre-clearance and monitoring will spread uh, like oil on water. Um, it, it's happening as we speak already for many, many years in, in Brazil. Um, it, it, it has across uh, the ocean uh, and, and through Portugal, uh, all, the, all of those pre-clearance type of uh, tools will be the uh, heart of how tax authorities in the future will monitor not so much the humans in the corporates, but the data sets in the corporates. And by putting monitoring software on those data sets, they will immediately know what the outliers are and, and issue IDRs if humans get involved at all. So this this looks a little bit future, futuristic, but I, I think there's already quite a, a few of you, especially the, the VAT people, who see this as the only way you can you can get this uh, whole increasingly explosion of uh, of tax compliance uh, under control. So thanks very much for your attention. Um, there's no further questions. So with that, I close this call and. Uh, Wishing you a good day. Thank you. Everyone for attending. Yeah, thank you.